Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the C-Man, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the C-Man's Cinema Sit Down. I don't got any time to waste. You know how it's been a long time since I've done one of these, but you know how I talk and how I can kind of go on tangents. So this probably will take a little while. So I don't want to waste too much of your time, but we got a trailer last night. It was a big old bad trailer. It's a trailer we all been waiting for for a long time, and confirmed some rumors that are now indeed seemingly true. Um, oh, dude, I can't wait for this freaking movie, and I can't wait to see our first piece of the multiverse saga on the big screen. Um, what am I talking about? Why don't you pull up a chair? Take a seat. Uh, we've already watched this trailer, uh, which means there's only one thing that we could be doing. It is time to break down the official teaser trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. And if you haven't seen the trailer or you haven't seen my reaction and you'd like to see what my first thoughts were, like the immediate thoughts in the moment, boom! You can check out that trailer reaction right up there. But now, it's time to, to, to go through this thing and kind of go a little bit more in depth on some of the stuff I picked up as I watched it multiple times this morning. I, I This dropped uh, while I, I fell asleep on my couch. It dropped. I missed it. Posted it as quick as I could. Took another nap. Watched it a bunch of times. And now here we are. Before we dive in, though, I want to point out that it, it certainly does seem like some of this storyline is being pulled from a, a pair of comic runs for Spider-Man. One called One More Day, both of which Joe Quesada was involved in writing. One More Day, though, was, was a, 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 a story that was used to kind of retcon some Spider-Man stuff following Civil War. Um, and I bring this one up because spinning right out of you know Civil War, where Spider-Man was unmasked, you get this story where Aunt May gets shot... She's dying, and the only person seemingly willing to stop that from happening ends up being, I know you're all going to be like, why are you even saying it? But, like, there's something weird about Doctor Strange in this trailer. And while I don't think that it's the case, I want to put it out into the world. And he ends up coming across Mephisto, who makes a deal to save uh, Aunt May by not asking for Spider-Man's soul, but asking for his marriage to Mary Jane. Uh, and after Mary Jane and Spider-Man confer, they come back to Mephisto, and they go, okay. Um, and Mephisto heals, you know, saves Aunt May, but what, like, changes everything else. And then changing, like, brings back some characters, like Harry Osborn, who was supposedly dead. But no more marriage between uh, Mary Jane and Spider-Man. This pissed a lot of people off, because this at this point in the Spider-Man story you had gotten to a place where there were a lot of things about the character that fans really liked, and a lot of that stuff got retconned off this story. I only mention it because I don't understand why Doctor Strange would do what he's doing knowing all the things that Doctor Strange knows. Um, so maybe, just maybe, 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 like a one in a bajillion chance Mephisto's in here. I mean, I think Marvel just continues to play with us with Mephisto. We'll see when we watch the trailer again. There's a, a, a poster that says uh, Devil in Disguise with Peter, and it's just like, you're, you're pulling on my heartstrings. I think we're going to get Mephisto eventually. I don't think we're going to get him here because there's, there's too much going on. Um, but maybe this is a, a movie that, that is leading to that. So I just wanted to point that piece of the story out and then bring up uh, a second line uh, that uh, Casada did like three years later called One Moment in Time, where this time around, Mary Jane gets wounded, um, and he takes her to Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange fixes her up, and Spider-Man decides, that's it. I, people knowing who I am are putting the people I care about in, in, in jeopardy. I need you to erase the fact that everyone, like, erase me from everybody's mind so nobody knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Which is <laughs> the direct tie and, and, and main plot line of, far, uh, of No Way Home. And in doing so, um, you know... Doctor Strange confers with Tony and Reed Richards, and they're like, yeah, let's do it, but it means everybody. Like, literally everyone but Peter will get wiped. And Peter's like, but I don't want that to happen. And he, he gets, like, put in, like, a chamber that kind of protects him from the spell, and at the last minute he jumps out, pulls Mary Jane in with him, and then after everything happens, uh, you know, kind of explains to her w what went down, and she is left with the, why didn't you let them erase your name from my memory? Like, I can't... I can't have a family with you because it's too dangerous and ends up leaving. Like I said, a pair of stories that I don't think really flew too well uh, in the Spider-Man <laughs> community, but two stories that seemingly are, are pulling, you know, like the idea of, like, Peter first becoming uh, known to everybody and then Doctor Strange wiping everyone's minds. Um, so I'll be interested to see what other things from those storylines they pull, but watching this trailer, um, while it's, like, three minutes long, 
I don't think it gives away too much, but I think it is set up maybe the first in the beginning of the second act of the movie. Seems like first part of this story is going to be that Peter Parker uh, trial. You know, like Peter's uh, accused of murder. Uh, he's got to deal with that, and it seems super heavy, as we'll go through in the trailer. Um, and the second part seems to be this spell that that whatever Strange does adds to whatever Wanda and whatever Sylvie did to open the multiverse up. Um, and and the fact that Doctor Strange could be playing a hand in that explains why he's not anywhere else. Um, but also, like, you know, it seems like the multiverse is going to be the back half of this film. As well as what I think could be a multiversal Sinister Six. I think we've seen four so far. And it's two from the Raimi-verse, two from that amazing Spider-Man-verse. And I think the other two are going to come from, from, you know, John Watts' and Tom Holland's uh, MCU Spider-Man. All right, I, I've talked way too much. We haven't even pulled the trailer up. So let me uh, put the old headphones back on the head. Let's pull the trailer up, and uh, let's not waste any more time, and let's dive right into uh, breaking down the No Way Home trailer. Well, we start with uh, you know our little pre like our, our teaser for the teaser. Uh, you get to see some of those mind-bending visuals. Um, and then we oh, open here. Um, I Some love suggest this. That Parker's powers include yeah, if MJ and, and Peter up, up on the top, and you have all these crazy theories going on, right? Like if she's reading, you know, the the paper. Um, all these things about oh, what can Spider-Man really do? What are his real powers? And I love MJ being like, oh, he has the ability to mind control women. Um, you know, <laughs> she calls him her Spider Lord at the end. Stop. Really nice bit. Right. But I love that you're able to take a beat. <laughs> And just remind everybody, like, this relationship rocks. And then we dive into the end of Far From Home. I mean, I think we're going to pick up legitimately right where we left off, where public enemy number one is now Peter Parker. He's on the run. It seems like him and MJ swinging through, trying to get away from all this, are going to eventually land on that bridge, and the NYPD is going to show up, and that's going to kind of kick off. Um... Where we see this Spider-Man trial potentially go. Listen, I did not um, kill So as we continue, you see Rome he's did. being interrogated. He's been arrested, um, and you know he's saying like, "I didn't do it. The drones did it." Um, drones and you'll that see this guy. The drones that are yours. You you forget that like, oh yeah, Tony left me all this stuff. Mysterio stole it from technically Peter, um, and did all these things. So like you can see, they're going in hard now. When I was watching the trailer, I just assumed that the guy who threw all these files down on the table was another officer. Rewatching this trailer a bunch of times, while the white shirt and blue tie kind of sync up with what the officers are wearing, I don't know why police officers would be giving Peter files to read. I think this is Charlie Cox, Matt Murdock, um, who we have confirmed is been announced that he is in the movie. I think that's our first visual of Charlie Cox. No no head. But I, I think I think that's Mr. Charlie Cox working on, on the defense case for Peter Parker with Peter after he's been interrogated uh, by the police. So that's super exciting. If that is the case, like Charlie Cox is in the MCU, baby, and I know there are a lot of Daredevil fans out there that are so happy that that's actually happening. Um, so I love that that's what that could be. Does any part of you feel relieved about all this? Um, and I also love this, like MJ saying, aren't you kind of more relieved? Like now you don't have to lie to people. And I think that's the thing that really has hit MJ in, in the MCU is like the thing that she really had to swallow and, and kind of deal with in, in Far From Home was the fact that like Peter was lying to her and everybody all the time. And I love that as we listen, mm -hmm. Peter's like, I, I never wanted to lie to you. Now here no. is a shot of Peter. What I, It feels like you're going into the trial, but he is very obviously in street clothes. He's with MJ, who's in street clothes. Uh, you got Ned, who's in street clothes. I think he is walking to, into the school. And as we see, like you'll see, he's got the same clothes on inside the school. But you have all these people at the school just waiting for Peter to show up, probably after he's been released on bail or something, screaming at him. And you have this freaking poster that says Devil in Disguise. And that was the first thing that made me go... Are we really? Are we? Are we? Are we going back there? Like you gonna tease us again with this Mephisto stuff? And that led me to remembering, like, oh yeah, that one more day storyline really actually did <laughs> did involve Mephisto. And it's things like this that that make me love and hate Kevin Feige and the MCU all at the same time because I, I'm not going down that rabbit hole. Mephisto, I'm saying it right now, he's not in this movie, but he has been in Spider-Man comics. He has ties to stories that are similar to this. I think that we're just kind of laying the groundwork to like. We might see Mephisto teased, like, all year long, and, like, a year from now, or maybe two. 
we finally see him in the MCU. Um, but, like, you can't not pay attention or look at that for, like, a hot second. Like, come on, man. How many times do you got to say the devil in the MCU before you give us Mephisto? Um, like I said, I don't think we're Everybody getting him here. knows you don't really have to hide uh, or but, you lie know, to people. For the record, I never wanted to lie. I love that. Like, you never wanted to lie to her. Here it is, again, I think going back to the beginning, uh, or, well, the beginning of the movie, probably for us, the end of Far From Home, which is where I think Spidey has just run as long as he can. He gets to this bridge. The, the um, You know, you ha- have police and news copters circling around him, and that's where I think he probably did something right here. All right, I'm, I'm done. As you can see here, he's wearing the exact same clothes he was wearing outside. This is the continuation of him walking in, and now everybody in the school is like, oh my gosh, that's Spidey. Like, it feels like the people outside the school are like, that's a murderer. Stop him. He's a menace to society. They're on the J. Jonah Jameson juice, man. Um, but it seems like inside the school, everyone is more like, holy crow. Like, this kid that goes to school with us is freaking pe- Like, that's Spider-Man right there. Let's get some pictures. Um, so like I said, this I think is what uh, most of the first act will probably be. But this isn't about me. This is hurting a lot. I, just, I love how heavy the trailer feels. About, like it feels dark. I mean, you can see before we get to these Doctor Strange lights. Like Peter looks like he's emotional. Um, you know, it is really driving home the fact that like people knowing now put everybody in danger. You know, from Ned to Aunt May to MJ to just people at the school. And like, I love this really heavy, dark feel on top of Spider Man. Like. It's a more adult-feeling storyline. And at this point in the MCU, like, yes, Peter is still in high school, but, like, he's, like, like Strange will say them, like, save, save the universe, man. Like, he should be a little bit more adult-feeling now. Like, he's gone through stuff that will make you grow up fast. Um, so giving a very heavy kind of plotline, I dig it. It makes it feel more real. It makes the stakes feel like they are way more tangible than I think we get in most Marvel movies and it just has a weight to it that I think is is something that is good to give to Peter Parker and the Spider-Man character now we got these Doctor Strange lights and as we the Sony of Columbia Marvel Studios come up boom Sanctum Sanctorum now I don't know what's going on here like I, I did some diving I was like Sanctum Sanctorum cold Sanctum Sanctorum frozen Doctor Strange lair like they're Nothing that I could find from the comic books brings up a moment where the Sanctum Sanctorum is frozen. Uh, and this is the beginning of that weird vibe that I'm getting from Doctor Strange. But also a, a tip that, like, I don't think that's Mephisto. Like, why would the devil want to be in a cold place, right? Now, there are some things here besides just watch how off Strange is during the sequence. But I also love the fact that my dude is wearing a winter coat inside and it seems like it's probably like fall time i think those are halloween decorations that we're seeing up um so like the fact that it's fall but it is like frozen inside of the doctor like inside the sanctum sanctorum is interesting and i'm fascinated to see why that is i would have to imagine one of the first things peter's gonna be like is like yo doc what is what is going on with all the ice and snow in here man like it's october like like we still got green leaves outside in new york city um but i love the fact that as we play this stretch out strange is wearing a winter coat and he's got the, the 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 cape on over the coat. It's such a strange looking visual, and I love every I'm sorry bit of to it. Bother you, sir? Please, we saved half the universe together. I think we're beyond you calling me, sir. Okay. I love this as well. It's weird, but I'll let it go because we saved half the universe together. Um, I, 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 I can already love what is going on with ben, Benedict Cumberbatch and, and Tom Holland. Like, I am going to enjoy these two on screen together so much, even if they're going head-to-head a little bit. I think they're, they're going to be on opposite ends of the fallout uh, of the spell that Strange does. Now, here, I'm fascinated to see this, because this looks like the inside of a cafeteria, but there are, like, adults behind Peter. So it makes me wonder, like, is this, like, a shelter? Um, and maybe, like, that's the cafeteria where, you know, uh, people are getting food. But these are not kids. These are adults behind Peter. Um, and what I love here is he's got the black suit on, which, from what we've been hinted at with the uh, pops, is something to help him with electricity. So this might be a stretch where he is running from Electro. Um, and, and I'll be interested to see what makes him pull off the mask in this situation. As you see, right as he came in, he kind of whips it off and then runs through this when cafeteria. Was- and, and you see the guy in the background, he's pointing like that way. Um, so maybe Peter takes it off to be like, hey, look, it's me. 
I don't know if y'all trust me, but like I gotta go stop whoever is running through here. And it would seem I, my thought would be he's only got that suit on because he, he's going after Electra. Um, and I love here this I think is more um, from that opening sequence that we'll probably get where like Peter stops at the West Thirty Third Street and just surrounded by everybody, man. Like everybody knows, so they're all all trying to get a piece of Peter right in that moment because it's like the world just found out. And then that leads Peter to say I was wondering magic if words. maybe you could make it so that he never did. Maybe they never did. Strange. Don't cast. Now, Wong, you hit it on the nose, man. Like, do not cast that spell. Like, we know just from the stuff that we've seen. Like, the repercussions of, of Doctor Strange wiping everyone's mind to the point where they don't know that Peter Parker is Spider Man. And, like, just, like, the precision that he would have to have to pull that off. Like, you're just taking one piece of information out of everybody's heads. And it's one of these where maybe Strange is just feeling his oats a little bit, where it's like, I just I just saved the universe. I could probably do anything I want to do with magic. And maybe this is one of these things where it's like he's going to try to push himself and this leads to some bad things. Or maybe there's more going on here. But I love the fact that Wong knows right away not, not the move not the move. And the other thing that I think is interesting here too with Wong is, that is what is, where is he going? Fine. I won't. I love this. Like, he's like, I won't. And like, where do we see Wong going? There looks like a building in the background that could be one of two things. Kind of looks a little bit like the Capitol building, but I'm thinking it is way more likely, like, this is one of the other things too. I said this right after Endgame. The five-year jump why would you do a five-year jump other than to like let the weight sink in like infinity war really happened and the world had to struggle with that for a while make that weight and that all the things that happened while we're gonna erase them all make it feel legitimate but the other reason is that now puts you into the future right like i think 2023 is where you know endgame picks up if you're jumping five years into the future that gives you some wiggle room where you can now make movies and television shows that happen right at a specific moment post Endgame that can all now happen simultaneously. So like in the original flow of time, I think WandaVision was going to be last. That was going to lead into Multiverse of Madness. And it's one of those where, like I said, having that five year jump allows you to now set things in our current time of what would have been 2019, but 2020, 2021, and 2022 before you get to that 2023 spot. It gives you three years that you could make movies that could all be happening at the same time. And this is exactly what I think is happening here. I think WandaVision, Loki, and this movie are all happening simultaneously. And that buffer gives you the ability to kind of have some wiggle room. Now, the other thing that we know, based on you know some of the... The, the trailers that we've seen for Shang-Chi and granted I have not watched all the clips I know they showed an extended clip of the fight with uh, Abomination seems like he's going up against Wong um, and if not Wong uh, another sorcerer but if it's Wong maybe that's where he's headed right now like maybe he's headed to that tournament and, and that's why he's got his bags packed and maybe the architecture that we're seeing there is, is more uh, you know in the realm of where Shang-Chi is taking place that would be really, really cool. Like, if we get to see Shang-Chi and then we go back to this, it's like, this is the moment that Wong left. Um, like, that could kind of be a cool, cool moment. But I, I love that as soon as Wong leaves, little wink from Doctor Strange, and off we go to do a spell that's going to gonna the Peter play Parker into the opening of the multiverse. Wait, everyone? Now, okay, some people this moment, me? this is one of those things that kind of makes me think about those those comic runs, um, specifically the latter of the two, where, you know, Doctor Strange wipes everybody's mind. Um, and Peter immediately is like, wait, wait, everybody? Like, do we have to do everybody? And it, it kind of feels like the, you know, like how he was in a chamber, jumped out, pulled Mary Jane in. This kind of feels like that moment where it's like he's on the outside of the spell and he's now crossed. He is crossed over that circle that Strange has created. So now he is inside of the spell that Doctor Strange is doing, which is why he's like, stop talking, you're messing up the spell, this isn't good. And what I think could be the trigger to like what leads to the multiverse opening. Peter stepping inside this circle of runes, I think is very important to whatever leads to the multiverse angle of this story. Like, if that moment doesn't happen, maybe Strange pulls, pulls this off fine. But the fact that Peter is inside the circles, 
I think is what causes the issues in the spell. Um, the other thing, too, that we can see here is you look behind Peter, and as we hit play, you'll see it more runes. Now, I don't think these look exactly like the runes that we've seen in uh, WandaVision or any of the... I think there was a couple of runes we saw, too, in, inside of Loki. But I think it's interesting that in all three of these, you know, two shows and a movie, runes are, are playing a big... I mean, they're, they're all part of the, the big into the magic, but, like... We're repeating, like, over and over that these rooms are tied to all of this magic. And I think the fact that you have three, well, two for sure magical, like, things happening at one time. And obviously, like, Loki is just tied to magic in general. Like, you have these three magical people doing things that lead to the multiverse. And what's crazy is if Kang is not lying to us... It's possible that he set all of these things in motion simultaneously because he knew that's what would break the multiverse. Like, not Sylvie deciding to kill him, but Sylvie deciding to kill him, Wanda creating her own little universe and becoming the Scarlet Witch, and Doctor Strange doing this. Maybe those three things combined were something that Kang knew. If they all happen, and they all happen at the exact same time, that'll bust this whole multiverse thing open and then I can die and I can start all over again because I'm bored like that's what it kind of feels like um so I, I like that like while we're doing this spell runes are everywhere um, and once Peter's inside work. and he's so distracting he's strange but he said stop, stop tampering, tampering with the spell, spell. Oh my god, Ned, he's my best friend oh, my Aunt May should really stop talking. talking now this is amazing because you, you see I love this shot. Like, as the spell works and moves out, it blows away reality, leaving Strange and Spider-Man hovering, looking like they're about to fall, into stuff that looks very similar to things that we saw in Loki. Like, the, the vision that we got of the multiverse breaking open and, like, the, the inside of the timeline, you know, before we end up at the Citadel, this visual effect here looks kind of similar to that. And the other thing that I've been kind of leaning heavily on is the fact that the What If trailer shows a moment where Doctor Strange seems to be being pulled between universes. Which is why I was like, What If is going to answer where Doctor Strange has been this whole time. Um, now, if this movie is lining up with WandaVision and Loki, that might not be the case. Or maybe it is. Um, but nevertheless, as you come out, you get very, very similar visuals of what looks like you're going through one of those universes, or going from one universe to the next. Um, so it makes me wonder, like, where they land? Is this our actual MCU home? Have they trans, you know, like, have they gone to a different Sanctum Sanctorum? Or, or is, like, the idea of all these characters coming back, not invading our world, but maybe just another world where there is no Spider-Man or something like that. Like, have they gone some... That's what I mean. Like, this trailer gives us so much, but I still got so many questions. Like, this could be a moment where it's like you've opened the multiverse, and rather than people coming in, maybe you've gotten taken somewhere. And I'm, I'm still... I'm fascinated to see how Spider-Man and Strange play into What If, because I think that might give us some hints at what could be going on with this movie. Um, but nevertheless... Following the spell, seems like we're okay. We're back in, inside the, the basement of the Sanctum Sanctorum. We get this Christmas. We've tampered with the stability of space time. We've tampered with the stability of space time, and we get to see those wonderful Doctor Strange visuals in a Spider Man movie. Like, it's one of these things where, again, the pandemic, I think, allowed Feige to shuffle some stuff up. I don't know if the original script for Spider Man No Way Home was this interconnected to the multiverse saga. Or if they were planning for the multiverse saga to be as big as it's gotten. But it seemed like with some of the shuffling, there might have been changes here. And I tell you what, man, kudos to John Watts. Because the stuff he's doing, this looks more like a Doctor Strange movie than a Spider-Man movie, which is kind of nuts. Um, but I love that, like, showing you right away in the trailer. Oh, that big stuff that we really haven't done yet in, in spite Which, Grant, I mean, John Watts has done some amazing things, specifically with Far From Home and all the illusion tech. But, like, this seems like a level up. And that makes me super excited. Um, but, like, you know, Doctor Strange says, we, we've messed with the space-time. And, and we don't exactly understand how the multiverse works. So, like, I'm wondering where in the movie that conversation with Spider-Man is happening. This? Him falling? Which we know. 
and like Strange chasing him, and like you see like the, everything just kind of building up, like oh, just a gorgeous visual. And then as Strange, you know, finishes talking about how like the multiverse is something that we don't really know very much about, we see this swirling wind of dust and then a bunch of gold lightning. Now this I'm fascinated by. Electricity, lightning makes you immediately think of Electro, and we know that Jamie Foxx has been cast, and he's the only one that we don't. That we know has been cast with him and Alfred Molina that we don't see. But we see two instances in the movie, or in the trailer, where we have this lightning, which is yellow. Now, I may not be remembering this completely correctly, but I'm pretty sure that Jamie Foxx's Electro's electricity was blue. So that makes me wonder, are we getting the Amazing Spider-Man Electro... Or are we getting Jamie Foxx playing a different version of Electro? One that maybe is a little bit more in tune with the comic accurate version, which would have gold or yellow lightning? I I'm, I'm wondering. Like, it it could it be, like, granted, my original theory of the Sinister Six vibe, like pulling two from each universe, plus, um, you know, the, 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 the Tom Holland, two Tom Holland villains, I really like that. It feels like that's what's going on here, but I can't, I just can't get out of my head the fact that it's not blue. Like, if it was Jamie Foxx, I thought we would have been seeing, like, blue-white lightning. Instead, we're seeing gold-white lightning. So, I don't know. May, may, maybe. Maybe we're getting an Electro variant. Um, but you can see here, we, we've got Daily Bugle. Um, I'm wondering if this is outside of maybe the uh, place where maybe they're keeping uh, Spider-Man. Like, maybe he, following, like, Bail or whatever, wasn't you know, just for his own safety didn't go home maybe he's got happy and aunt may at a hotel it seems like maybe this could be like a, a large you know building maybe it's a massive apartment um maybe it's the police station uh you see the cop cars out there but it seems like my thought would be like this is wherever they're keeping spider-man and peter like wherever he's staying while this is transpiring for his own protection you've got guard outside take you out of your actual home um but here it would seem like electro is is coming for him. Now this, another thing. How do we get to the Grand Canyon? <laughs> On a freaking, what looks to be a, a, a New York City train. Like, that looks like a city train. And I don't know how we got, got to the Grand Canyon. I'm fascinated about how that happens, but man, do I love these visuals. Like, the stuff that Strange can do. The problem. It is so good. It's so good. I love it so much. Um, like, that is one of the most stunning visuals for me in the entire trailer. Like, those trains moving around with Spidey on them and, like, the diff in the Grand Canyon. Gosh, that's so good. And then also, like, seems like one of those things that could, could be a Mysterio illusion. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. I, this, this, this trailer's already got me feeling a few ways. But it's you. nevertheless, now we hear that one of the reasons that these problems are happening... Um, or maybe, you know, it's strange kind of talking, maybe, maybe Peter has second thoughts about doing this, casting this spell while he's down in, in, in the basement. And maybe this line from, from Dr. Strange is what convinces him to go through it. Like your problem is that you're trying to live in two worlds and like, you gotta pick one. So like we could erase everybody's memory. You could just be Spider-Man. But like, you know, the, the, the dual life is an issue. And I'm wondering if maybe by the end of this movie, it's the and maybe this line is coming from somewhere later on but like maybe this movie is spider-man realizing that like he needs to be out in the open and he needs to just own it like the double life is really what's causing a lot of the problems but i like that dr strange says that two different lives this why why is dr strange knocking spider you know peter parker out of spider-man and, and into the astral plane and like i said I, I think these two are gonna have some sort of conflict and whatever the conflict is maybe this is the moment that strange uses to like level peter um like hey the ancient one did this to me i'm gonna do it to you so we can get on the same page um but one i'm fascinated as to why strange is doing this and two what is spider-man holding like that contraption in his hand looks very much like something that would be coming from the sanctum sanctorum or something that dr strange owns so maybe that's why he's knocking him out whatever that box is clearly must have some sort of ramifications that Spidey thinks will be useful for him and that Doctor Strange is like, no, you can't be messing with that. So maybe that's what this is. Um, but nevertheless, we're going to follow this with a moment that I think might be teasing the lizard. The longer you do it, the more dangerous... Now here too, I, this, I think this shot with, with the, the, you know, you got all of the, the SWAT guys with the laser, 
uh, you know, pointers on their guns coming in. They're surrounding Happy. You see the outside of what looks like an apartment building that's been messed up and is on fire. Maybe this is why Peter gets maybe put somewhere other than his home. Like, it seems like maybe Electro or somebody have already come for him. And this is Happy showing up late, you know, looking very worried. Probably more for May than for Peter. Um, but maybe that is tied to that first bolt of lightning that we saw. Uh, maybe Electro is the first villain that comes through that's coming after Peter. Um, the cons. But here, right here, we're going to go through this. I'm going to boost up the... the, the, the we're going to boost the, the, the brightness a little bit, the gain, so that you guys can see a little bit. This is one of those shots that like I, I totally glossed over and missed um, when I was watching the trailer. But in rewatching, this looks like Peter following... I'm assuming probably his court case. It's the only reason that he'd be in a suit and tie. Must be coming from that. Must be dealing with some stuff. Again, looks very, very emotional here. And looks to be down... Back, it looks almost like they're back in the Sanctum Sanctorum basement. Um, and, and, and certainly, like, it, it, I would assume it's coming after, you know, one of his court cases. That's why he's in a suit and tie. He looks emotional. Maybe he lost. Maybe, maybe MJ got taken. Uh, something emotional has happened to Peter. And maybe he's come back, you know, to, to Doctor Strange for looking for help. And the only reason I think that we're somewhere where Strange is, is if you look behind Peter, as we go frame by frame, there is something moving in the background that he obviously reacts to. But as that thing that is moving gets close and takes a swipe, you see runes and magic all around that. And as you look at the body in the background, looks kind of hulking, looks very blonde, seems to have what looks like maybe some sort of a tail. Like, I'm thinking this could be the lizard from the Amazing Spider-Verse realm. And that would give you your two from that, you know, him and Electro. Give you your two from the Raimi-Verse with Doc Ock and, and uh, as we'll see, Green Goblin being hinted at pretty strongly. And maybe those two that could be Vulture and Scorpion? Or if not Scorpion, maybe Mysterio's still in play. Maybe some of the illusion stuff that we see isn't coming from Doctor Strange, maybe it's coming from Mysterio. But that's how you could get a, a, a multiversal Sinister Six. Um, the other thought would be is if that's not Lizard, then maybe that's Scorpion. Maybe that's why we see a tail. Maybe Scorpion got out of prison, he's got his suit back on, and, and you know we're seeing him come after Peter here. But whatever we're seeing, they try to hit him, and there's some sort of protective shield um, that is being made by magic, and, and most likely it looks to line up with the colors that Doctor Strange has. Maybe that's... I, I, like There's some sort of protection spell uh, on, on Peter in that moment. It was one of those, like, re-watching the trailer a lot of times. That was the first time I picked it up. Now let's get to the last part of this. You see another shot from what looks to be Electro. And then there it is, folks. That is a pumpkin bomb from Green Goblin from the Raimi-verse. That is identical. Identical to the very most minute detail to the pumpkin bombs from the Raimi-verse. This is our confirmation that Willem Dafoe is back as Green Goblin and he's coming into the MCU. And I would... I'll be interested to see what the fallout is here. Like, do they get these guys back to their known universes? Do those folks get trapped here? You know, and where are the other, like, the actual versions of them in this world. Like, maybe they don't exist. Maybe they got knocked off at a different time. Maybe they've swapped places. I'm just thinking, like, either this is going to be the most epic Spider-Man movie we've ever seen and we'll find a way to not need to bring back Willem Dafoe or Alfred Molina or Jamie Foxx ever again. Or maybe this is the moment that's actually bringing them into the MCU to stay. Um... I'm fascinated to see how that plays out. Um, I love that you hear the laugh. Sounds like Willem. And then this voice. The first few times I watched it, I thought it was Doctor Strange saying, be careful what you wish for, Peter. But maybe, just maybe, that's Willem. Let's listen. Be careful what you wish for, Parker. That's 100% Willem Dafoe. The more and more I listen to it, specifically with it, like that is 100% Willem Dafoe. Now, the thing I'll be fascinated with is how does... Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, and as we see here, wait for it. Oh, dude, they're so good. Hello, Peter. How does Alfred Molina know that that's Peter Parker? Like, how does he know Tom Holland is Peter Parker? Like, how long has he been here? 
right? Like, I'm thinking that this moment in time is not like the multiverse opening up and them coming, you know, from their places. They've been here. So, I'm assuming that, you know, Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Electro, anybody that may be coming from some of the other universes have been here for a few beats and have seen probably the non-stop news that Peter Parker is Spider-Man and that's why he knows him. And it would seem that this this whole sequence is tied to whatever potential lizard, you know, was, was coming at, at, at Peter in that basement because he's wearing the same suit. So I'm thinking, I love that he's wearing the sneakers, he's not wearing dress shoes, I love that. Um, but, like, this is clearly either him on his way to probably a court hearing or coming back from a court hearing and stuff is starting to go down. But it would seem like we are going to get, like, multiple villains coming after Pete all at once out of this. Um, and, and I love it. I love that he immediately can, can, can jump into his Iron Spider suit. Oh, well, so good. So good! Uh, we don't get a post, you know, title card tease, which is a little surprising. Um, but wow. Like, wow. There, there is... There's so much in there. And, like, it is. It's it's one of these trailers that, like, very easily could, could, could be setting up all of the things that we just talked about. One of the things that we just talked about. None of the things that we've talked about. But coming off of this trailer, the big takeaway for me is I think we're getting a multiversal Sinister Six. I think something weird is going on with Doctor Strange. I don't know what it is. Um, but maybe... If you're going to go crazy theories, somehow tied to Mephisto. Otherwise, I, he just seems off. Like, I don't know why he would do this spell after everything that they've done. And you'd also have to assume that, like, the way he was able to look into the future, and, uh, you know, that million-something whatever possibilities, there was only one that worked out for the Avengers in that moment. Like, I don't know. Has that, has that made him more arrogant, more cocky? Because he knows more, like, in traversing all of those different realities... Did he learn more? Has he already started to explore the multiverse? Like, he, you hear him talk about it. I'm just, I'm fascinated to see how this all ties together. And more than anything, I am fascinated to see how the Spider-Man and, and Doctor Strange what-if stories maybe tie into this movie. Um, but whatever they're doing, Willem Dafoe is coming back as Green Goblin. Confirm, baby! Like, 100% his voice. And a hundred percent like an identical pumpkin bomb from that rainy verse. I'm I'm so excited. And I, I I hope that this movie and Doctor Strange are like one two part story. Like I hope that we end on some sort of cliffhanger here, and that in some way, shape, or form, Raimi gets to play with his old toys just a little bit. Like I I would I would assume that you'll probably see Sam Raimi being a producer on this, and maybe they brought him on set when they start bringing back his guys. But I hope that this story rolls into the Doctor Strange story in a way where we can see Sam Raimi get to play with Green Goblin and Doc Ock again. And hopefully Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Like, that would be really cool, um, is how this all wraps up. Will this close the Spider-Man chapter of the multiverse by the end? Will it roll right into Doctor Strange? Not sure, but I'm so here for the journey, man. We've got an official date, December 19th. We are vastly quickly moving, man. We're less than four months away. From freaking Spider-Man being in theaters, which is so, 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 so exciting. Um, and you know that we're going to get, you know, an official trailer and probably an official trailer too. And if Marvel keeps doing what they've been doing, maybe Sony might stop them from doing this. But we could see a bunch of clips too, which I will actively continue to avoid because I want surprises in my movies. But the, whatever trailers follow, I am so pumped. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready for the next trailer. Marvel, give me the next trailer. I know we've been asking for this one. And we've all probably watched it a million times. But, like... I'm ready for the next one, man. I want, I'm just ready for this movie. It looks so good. I'm so excited. I have talked way too long, as per usual, man. You give me something that's this long, and I'll talk about it like this long. But those, I just want to get all my thoughts out there before like we start getting more information on this movie and where we could be headed. But my, my big takeaways, something's off of Doctor Strange. I think a multiversal Sinister Six is coming into the picture, and I think we're going to get Scorpion and Vulture rounding that group out with the long ball theory that maybe Mysterio is still involved. That's all I've got. I am done. Now it is your turn. How many times have you watched the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer? What have you picked up and taken away from the trailer that maybe I missed? Is there anything that, that you saw or you thought about that we kind of skimmed over, glossed over, missed breaking down the trailer? What are your theories? How do you think this is tying into the multiversal story? Do you think Spider-Man and, and Doctor Strange are going to be one story together? We're like, hey, 
Doctor Strange invi- invaded the Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man going to invade the Doctor Strange movie. Like maybe this is just a two-character team up for two movies. Is that what you think is coming? Who do you think we we're going to see as far as the villains? Are we going to get a Sinister Six that, that that somehow forms from the multiverse? Anything that you're thinking, man, from theories to what you're liking or not liking about the trailer, the story, anything you got, man, good, bad, indifferent, on the teaser trailer, the three-minute teaser trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home goes down below in the comment section. Look forward to talking to you down there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and if you're new, you want to come hang out with the C-Man. Anytime we're talking TV, movies, trailer reactions, you want to be here as we approach December. We got What If tomorrow, um, you know, all the way, almost, it would seem almost all the way in, like kind of leading us right into, you know, all the other things that are coming from her. We got Shang-Chi, we got Eternals, and we're going to have Spider-Man. How are they all going to tie together? You want to be here for all of it. You want to show a little love support because you dig what I'm doing. Well, then come. Join C Maniac Nation. Really easy to do. All you got to do, jump over there, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell if you want those alerts, and until next time, for the C-Man, cinema, sit down. I've been the C-Man, and I am standing off. Peace. Oh, hey, what's going on? Uh, you must be sticking around because you're looking for more content feature in this guy. Well, guess what? You're in the right place. You can check out more videos right here and right here. Uh, and if you have and you want to come join that C-Maniac Nation, you can hit that subscribe right over there.